Okay, so everyone, this is again Gordon Einstein, your crypto attorney located here in Dubai. And I am continuing my series of talking to influential, powerful, charismatic, successful locals and non locals. But here we have a blend situation. So I would like to introduce my longtime friend, uh, Timur Kudratov. Uh, Timur is he'll introduce himself in a second, but I want to say, you know, I'm very blessed that when I came to Dubai, I wasn't alone. I had a lot of people who quickly, one way or another, helped me out. Get, got me on stage, made introductions. You know, I worked with them when it's appropriate since that point. But I, I kind of launched quickly here in Dubai, which maybe is something about Dubai. But I think I was good to Dubai, and Dubai was good to me. And Timur was one of the aspects of Dubai that was good to me. So I want to pay pay it forward and pay it back to him. Uh, he's just an amazing person with a very interesting history. So. Uh, Timur, we'll, we'll go in depth, of course, but why don't you do a fast initial introduction about yourself, and then I'll start pounding you with questions. Sure. Please go ahead. Okay. Hey, everyone. Hi, Gordon. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to your uh, interviews. So my name is Timur. As Gordon said, Kudratov. I'm originally from Uzbekistan, and I'm here in Dubai since 2004, and I started my uh, entrepreneurial career and 2006 so since then i'm uh, running multiple businesses and uh, here happy to uh, share my experience and share my knowledge and uh, All right. perfect we'll, we'll, we'll dive in so let's start from the beginning what what were you doing in uzbekistan before you came to dubai Wow. Okay. In Uzbekistan, before I came to Dubai, um, most of the time I worked as a waiter uh, at FMB. So I was pretty much within uh, nightclubs, uh, restaurants, uh, while uh, school and then university haven't graduated. I left, I, I left Uzbekistan to Dubai in 2004. That's when I just joined university. But uh, yeah, I met my future employee, uh, representative of uh, Jumeira Group in mm -hmm. Uzbekistan. That's how I basically ended up being a lifeguard in 2004 within wow. Jumeira Hospitality. Yes, that's how I came to Dubai. So you meet some guy and he says, come to Dubai and be a lifeguard. And you're like, sure, well, I'm, done with, <laughs> I'm done with Uzbekistan. I mean, the, the, way, the way you put it sounds dirty. I met the guy who told me to go, no. I was I was a waiter. I was an assistant manager at the Irish pub okay. in Uzbekistan. And one of the evenings, uh, there was uh, two couples, uh, mm -hmm. two males, two females. Uh, they came over and my manager said, like, look, the guy last time was complaining when you're not here. He said, no one speaks English. And I normally bring... Uh, uh, English speakers, and it's an Irish pub. How come yes. no one speaks English? And he said he do he does something with uh, sending people abroad. You wanted to go to Dubai, so here you go, take the table. So while serving them, having conversation, they told me that like, hey, I knew that I can you know use my charisma to make them offer me and uh, make me a proposal. So the two ladies there, they said, listen. Have you thought about working in Dubai? I was like, wow, <laughs> it's a dream. Why not? And she said, well, I'm an HR director for uh, Jumeirah Beach Hotel. That time I didn't know what is Jumeirah Beach Hotel. And uh, her friend was uh, an HR director for Wild Wadi Water Park. So they said, you have a choice. You can join FMB, like here as a waiter, or you can join as a lifeguard. Well, that time I was... Uh, overwhelmed or like i spent so many years i mean I'll, like since grade nine i was in fmb right so sure. nine ten so three four years i was in fmb i was tired so i thought that well, lifeguard being lifeguard uh, in the ocean and you know this uh, yeah, uh the dubai ocean yeah 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 exactly the dubai <laughs> ocean <laughs> yeah, so I thought like, wow, yeah, I'll join as a lifeguard. So yeah, they made me a proposal. They put me in a group. Basically, they came that evening right after the interviews. They just completed the list of potential candidates to take them with them to Dubai. So I was just an extra person. 
So I'm an extra person, extra lifeguard. That's how I ended up here. In Congratulations on taking that initiative. That, that that's see, I'm learning. This these interviews are great because I've known you for a long time, but I didn't know this, yeah. and it's a good, okay. it's a good reason to find out. So 2000, you come in 2004, oh. and then 2006, you made your entrepreneurial yeah. transition. If I understand correctly. So uh, while working, so Jumeirah um, uh, still is, and before it was a great school to basically explore Dubai basic because you are employed by the company which is a huge conglomerate I mean in terms of hospitality it has a lot of hotels worldwide and invest a lot into education of their employees that time at least so we had uh, we could take English classes we could take Arabic classes we could take IT classes in your free time so Jumeirah Help me grow. So I start growing from, of course, from lifeguard in six months, I uh, moved to one of the hotels as a concierge. That's mm -hmm. the first time I learned what is concierge. I lied uh, in my CV that I actually knew what is concierge mm -hmm. and I knew what is Fidelio for the hotels. And uh, yeah, my, uh, again, I think that- You didn't you know, lie, you my, improvised. You, you can improvised. say it's like learning English. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, I, I got the job at Concierge. So mm -hmm. at the first time I uh, realized that there are people out there who is willing to pay extra, like in terms of tips, for a comfort. So they need yeah. for an information. So that's when I learned what is Concierge, why people are paying extra. So I worked and developed myself within hotels of Jumeirah as Concierge. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2006, uh, leaving uh, Jumeirah. First, I joined the Nivea. Uh, Beiersdorf is a German company. Nivea, the creams. Yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Nivea be belongs to Beiersdorf. So I, w I worked a little bit, maybe a month. Uh, I tried with Nivea, then I worked as a travel guide. So in 2006, in April 26, mm -hmm. I... Uh, Remember opened, the day. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I opened... Luxury World Key Concierge. It was a fancy name, but there was nothing behind it. It was just a name, license, and myself. So I had maybe five or six different email accounts mm -hmm. uh, and an info accounts, Svetlana, and <laughs> all of it was me. Tatiana, so, Natasha. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I was really I know you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, fake it until you make it. But uh, uh, you know, it worked in the sense because I knew my shit. Like I'll put it this way. I knew what is concierge. I knew what is high-end services. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was doing it all by myself, but I had an opinion that because Dubai is all about presentation, right? And you've noticed being here, right? So people like to improvise or people like to add credentials sometimes. Sure unnecessary i believe but that time i didn't know so i was going through that period of understanding what is dubai for me i th i thought that i should present myself as someone who has a big office and a huge amount of people it worked it got an attention in, mm -hmm. in a sense then i made my first money i started growing i started developing the team and uh, since now till now a luxury walkie concierge company still exists and it's part of our portfolio and uh, it turned to be a great uh, uh, sales center so it creates opportunities it creates connections it creates mm -hmm. network and uh, we is, use is the it, luxury is the, core, is the core business still concierge no. services no. well uh, I'll put it this way it's not the core business it's a core like we don't have sales division our sales division is a concierge company because it already has clients right so, so, so maybe yeah. maybe that's the point of initial contact if you like yes and then they yeah. find out more yeah it's, it's, that, it's the first it exactly so because it's the it's the cheapest lead generator i'll put it this way and the cheapest for us because we keep the concierge which makes money anyway yes but then also get, generate leads for other businesses. So you arrange a transportation for the client, you send him a car, you send flower to his wife, you put his kids in a proper school, he's your loyal client now. Then he starts 
listening more. He's invited to events. He, he he listens more to other services we provide, other businesses we have. He can become an investor in one of our businesses. He can become a, a client of another businesses. And so that's how concierge operates because it is purely paid by clients who use the services. That's why it can. That's why I say it's the cheapest way to generate leads to real estate, to clinics, to schools, and other businesses. And you, you, you anticipated one of my questions, but you, but let's ask it anyways. What exactly does the Dubai concierge do? Okay, I'll I'll say it this way because there are plenty of now concierge, so called assistant and consultants, and everyone does everything. And I hate when people say, oh, we do everything. We don't do everything, us at least. Or I tell my staff not to say these things, like mm -hmm. we are A to Z service. No, we are not A to Z service. Mm -hmm. So we are an excellent service providers to high net worth individuals. Okay. We only cater to, so I'll put it this way again. Our clients are those who actually found us ourselves when they typed uh, looking for a concierge service. You know, so those clients, they come to us understanding that we are a concierge company. So we're not a travel agency, though we can help you with the travel arrangements. We're not an event agency. We can help you to organize a really nice event because we have great connections. And, and we've I done believe, it together, and I've, I've experienced Yes, it exactly. And I exactly. hope we're going to do more together. So, oh, yeah. but that's the next conversation, <laughs> but that's not on video. Yeah. Anyways, go yeah. ahead. But just, just for the crowd, I've, I've had the pleasure yeah. of attending many of Timur's events, and I've had the pleasure of collaborating with him on a few events. And they're, it's a great team. They bring good spirit. It's, it's, it's very pleasant. So I just want to give a shout out. You know, he's not paying me to Thank say you. this, but I, I, I know from yeah. personal experience, they're good. But go Thank ahead, you please. very much. Sure. Thank you. So, yeah, for us, concierge is um, a division who it's not even a helping. It's basically um, we make the transition of an entrepreneur and his family into this world much smooth, right? So we help them to put their kids into a proper school because sometimes the school has a huge waiting list, so we have connections in that. We help you with restaurant reservations. We help you to connect with right individuals and explore the network of Dubai. This is what we do. And there are different ways we uh, collaborate with clients and individuals and corporates and individuals, but as concierge itself, because as if you take a traditional concierge in UK or anywhere else, you would need concierge in London in order to someone to get you access to a certain places, right? In Dubai, is not really a thing. Like if you go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and then you spend a, an average, let's say, you say you being nice to managers and waiters. So they'll start inviting you themselves. You don't need yes. really a concierge to get you a table there. So those things are covered. And uh, oh, sorry, let, 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 me, let me jump in. Yeah. You, may, you may not need a concierge later, but I think that yeah. if you're visiting or but finding your way, your initial yes. entry gets a lot smoother, maybe of with course. the concierge. Then you establish, then you find out where you like and you establish your own relationships. I 100%. Think. And look, uh, sometimes we have clients who came back Let's say they, they've been recommended to use our concierge for certain things. Let's say they had troubles with uh, their real estate agent or they have uh, troubles to get their kids into school or they have troubles of getting things done with their maybe bank. So they are recommended to a concierge. But when, when we take them as enlightened minds, the company I represent today, we take them into the ecosystem, we show them the benefits they could get if they came a year back, right? So now let's say there is a family who started to use a concierge service. It's a family with one kid, one nanny. They started, they approached one of our real estate agents and then they start using the concierge. So now when we met him last week, he's a doctor, he's a dentist. He realized that everything we do, 
he could get that faster to the where he is now. So he bought a clinic, right? At our real estate. Then real estate agent, our real estate agent assigned him to a concierge girl mm -hmm. who would help him with his family, visa, put the kids, bring the nanny, bring the dog, blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. then he started asking more and more questions about the clinic, the medical equipment. Then they introduced him to me and my team at Enlightened Minds. So we mm -hmm. sat down and I explained him what we're doing. I was like, he's like, shit, a year back when I came, I went through it all by myself with all the fuck ups, right? So it's not that- uh, We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to censor that kind of stuff for Ramadan. Yeah. With all the mess ups. <laughs> yes, exactly. So for a year, instead of six months completing the renovation, he spent a year. Obviously, for this year, he was not working. His clinic was not working. And all that uh, in the line where we, he could have saved time, he could have do it together. Maybe we would even require a portion of his clinic to add his clinic into our portfolio. Plus, having, as I said, concierge company, which has been operating for the 19 years, high, high net worth individuals, the clients for his clinic could have been referred by a concierge if yeah. it was working, right? So we could help not only start his business, but boost his business. But this is what maybe now led that from a concierge company where I have a huge experience. It now went into enlightened minds mm -hmm. and uh, a uh, investment holding company, which helps businesses which invest into businesses in order to grow them, right? And so you're kind of a private equity play. Sounds like yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. So, 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 but, so let, let, me, let me stop you because this is fascinating. But I, I just want to understand: you sort of have your marketing gate access point, yes. whatever you want to call it. It's LWK. It, it's the yes. most public-facing, obvious thing. And it, yes. it sort of pays for itself because really it's a profit making business. It's a it's a marketing agency under the mask of a concierge service, but you're obviously yes. providing good services or yes. someone doing anything. Then that leads to other conversations. And many of those other conversations are business related. And that's where enlightened minds kicks in, which I think sounds like a combination of private equity slash a little bit of business generation slash management play. Yes. yes? Okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, so you got the speeder, which is smart. Yes. So the everything started with concierge, but then we decided like, okay, we need to identify what we're good at, right? So we can't onboard every business and we can't help every business if we don't have experience or maybe we yet don't have uh, an advisor on board who can help, right? So mm -hmm. we identify six main pillars. It's marketing media, it's mm -hmm. lifestyle, it's learning and development, health and wellness, next gen technologies and investments. All right. Yes. So now within this past two years, by joining companies together and see how this ecosystem is growing, we understand that. Okay. So on the same way, we've been approached by a, a, an owner of a marketing company, right? A marketing agency, traditional digital marketing agency. So he relocated here with his family. His business, his business has been running for the seven years. He caters to quite big, famous names. Can't disclose them. But so what we did now, the acquiring part. So we acquired 50% of his company. But in what did we do? We didn't just bought it, right? We didn't just give him money and say, hey, we want to have 50%. No. So we gave him a license, which we had. Right, so which we invested before. So we gave him a license, we mm -hmm. gave him an office, we gave him, we asked him why he needs the money, right? So then we gave him clients. So now listen to this, who are his clients? His client is our concierge company. His okay. client is our real estate company. His client now is our schools, clinics, and everyone we're gonna bring on board now, we're gonna say, hey, there is only one condition. You have to put our marketing. We have to control the marketing because we understand the local realities. Yes, you might have a team, you have a representative, but this has to be served by our marketing agency. 
Okay, good. I agree with these terms. But we will also pay this marketing agency, right? Because mm -hmm. everyone has to benefit. But you won't pay a crazy amount. So whatever you pay or whatever you require to pay outside, we'll try to pay here. Or let's say at least Ivan, who is the head of marketing division now, mm -hmm. can take under the control whatever he is using outside, that entrepreneur, right? So now marketing head, Ivan, is now growing the marketing division. So now there are two magazines we are in discussion with who wants to enter this market. So we told them, okay, first we'll put you under the marketing division. So Ivan will be head. You will run your, you will be the owner of your magazine, but we want 30% of this magazine. Mm -hmm. The clients who will promote will be concierge, real estate, clinic. They will buy the advertisement in that magazine, right? So we will. Anyway, oh, interesting. You got a marketing company, and you're the you yeah. yourself are the customers of your own marketing company. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Ivan doesn't need now because he has fifteen more clients to his existing four clients. He has fifteen more clients who pays on monthly basis, and we would have paid this amount anyway to any other agency for websites for whatever, right? So. The ecosystem exists in order to help that business to run where we have shares, but help other businesses to run where we have shares. So now we, and this only clicked recently as well, because before I was trying to promote enlightened minds, right? Oh, you hanged. Okay. No, you, you, you did too. You don't, don't worry about it. Keep going. Well, we're having uh, people watching. Keep stay stay on the show. It's not, no. So okay, it's going. working. It's, it's okay. It was brief. It's not hanging. Okay, so, so you, anyway, you were uh, marketing enlightened minds, but now but then what? Yeah, but then I realized that enlightened minds doesn't have its services or it doesn't have its uh, products. The only products we have is the companies we have under, right? So mm -hmm. what we want to grow now is each business. So now I would be more than happy if somebody comes to me and says, you know, and it happened recently, you won't believe. The marketing agency, which we own now, 50%. So I had a I had a bank. It's a, it's a private Russian bank. They were our clients for events. Mm -hmm. And when we met recently, with their marketing hat and she was saying listen Timur for this year our budget is too short for events but uh, you know uh, we uh, met on one of your events with this amazing marketing agency and now we signed a contract with them in back of my head I already know that because I've seen this in the reports because it's my marketing agency but I don't want to shout out and say no yes great it's still me because then it makes me that I want all five fingers in my mouth. I don't want. Okay. The marketing agency job is to make money from us. If, if let's say concierge company will come to us and says, listen, Timur, you know what? The marketing company you forced us to take is overcharging us. We found something cheaper. I will allow them to go ahead and take someone else. Mm -hmm. But preferably it should be that right so let's put it this way if it's our at least if we have an influence in that business we'll ask them to use this marketing agency so this is the whole ecosystem then when we do events we bring all of them together so we allow them to communicate to connect to network and this is the business model now so that's why i call myself an investment holding company but we don't really give hardcore cash we give them opportunity to grow with the clients we have opportunity to take more clients to make more money so most of the time when you fundraising you're raising it to expand to get better talents to get better things but to make more money at the same time right unless you're planning to exit if you want to uh, an investor to come because you want to recover part of your investment and you want to exit this is one thing, but we get into companies to help them exit, right? So it will or come is, to is the, it the exit or that help them scale, scale up to, but there should be an exit, right? I mean, the inter, the the business owner should come to us for the help to scale in order to exit at some point. 
I mean, I don't want well, to. Do we we, this we all exit eventually, even if we die, and then our <laughs> kids get it. But yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah. But look, I'll put it this way. For me, there are two now, what I've realized, there are two main divisions, mm -hmm. which I actually, I mean, uh, somehow I see the huge potential. It's health and wellness mm -hmm. and education, right? I think what you do as well, developing your personal brand, mm -hmm. it's part of education. So you want people to know and learn through interviews in order to be educated. So, sure. right. So we grow our personal brand to let people know about us. And I want them to come to me for my experience. So I'm ready to share and I want to be paid for it. hundred uh, percent. It's good to give back to society. I'm, I'm plus now is Ramadan. It's, it's good to give back to society, but it's also good to give back to society when you are sustained yourself, right? When you are self-sustained. You, 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 you need can... to eat. You need to live. <laughs> exactly. The, so, the, 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 this this anti-capitalist instinct that some people have is ridiculous. You, when you create value, everyone benefits. And creating knowledge and information and interest and attention, if you do it correctly, it's a benefit to society. And of course, it's going to make money. Money is exactly. value. It's just a way of monetizing yeah. value. So sure, it's great. Yeah, it, it's like we we had a discussion about uh, the. Uh, CSR, corporate social responsibility, and about the ESG environment. Uh, I was like, well, look, it's all great. And of course, yes. But is it the fact that I create a job for people under my umbrella and I help them feed their families and I feed my family as well, which is part of society. Yes. That, is, this, is this considered a CSR? That our CSR to create multiple jobs, help people grow, help people scale, help people get more knowledge. It is a CSR. It is a corporate social responsibility. You can add different labels to it. You can do an eco-friendly environment and stuff like that. I understand that. But we I'll, are all I'll, for I'll, I'll, I'll even take it one level further. Yeah. So you're, 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 you're pressing on one of my buttons, which is... <laughs> I don't believe in companies causing harm. Obviously, that's an issue. Like, you know, if someone's polluting and not in the environment and yeah. not paying costs for it, obviously, obviously that's bad. But the whole point of capitalism and economic activity is, is that you take inputs that are worth something and then through different factors of production, whether it's labor or capital or land or intelligence or systems, you create more than was there when you started. So for example, if you take $50 worth of input, I'm giving away my American background. If you take $50 worth of input, work your magic. And then what comes out of the other side is $100 worth of value. You didn't just necessarily mark it up. What you did was yeah. create new value that wasn't on the planet before. And now the whole planet is $50 richer than it was yeah. and sure when you sell yeah. it you you're you know that new wealth is in your pocket but it's certainly not staying there it's going to yeah. be in, in barring unusual cases you know the crypto wallet sure under your mattress sure but 99 percent of the time it's being deployed and made useful elsewhere so that the fundamental thing the best thing you can do is add value create wealth where it wasn't before and you do that by intelligently combining these factors and the side effect of that is things like employment or stability or increasing life levels and everything else. But the, underneath it all is, is what you're doing, adding value. And some things don't yeah. like that. You know, some of this social stuff doesn't add value, it just moves value around. <laughs> yes, I agree. Sometimes, as, as I said, I mean, even from the perspective of investments, right? So people are running around with this, all oh, this CSR, this ESG, and then creating projects. But, on my last uh, gathering at Capital Club related to that, the questions I and everyone ask, okay, so from perspective of investor, now we are asking, okay, if I'm putting the money, when do I make money back? What is ROI? Yeah, yeah. helping back. But if I can't, if I don't, if I invest in something where I don't make money, I don't sustain myself, my business is going to collapse, it is even worse for society. If my people will lose job, they won't be able to send money home 
to support the ephemeris, etc. etc. It's a big circle. So uh, we need to see what is more healthy for environment, right? Or what is that? But well, there, there, there's only there's only really three ways to make money with you know unless you're stealing it, which is you can either add value, which is the natural producer of return on investment. If you're adding value. By definition, your investment is producing a return. That's easy. Yeah. The, the other activities, you know, if you want to get into economics, it's called rent-seeking behavior. Rent-seeking behavior is when I take advantage of my legal or market position to extract value from someone else without earning it. So like a licensing fee or a licensing fee monopoly. I'm not adding value, yeah. right? I'm extracting value from the people who already added yeah. it. And uh, I'm, you know, it's it's one thing if I'm a merchant yeah. moving a product from city A to city B, and that needs to happen for it to come to market. That's not really rent seeking. I'm adding value because sometimes resources need to be moved around. But a lot of these people are just extractive, and uh, yeah. this, you know, ESG and DEI and all this other stuff. You know, the intentions may be good, but they, it ends up being rent seeking. They're not adding value. They're just moving yeah. around. And of course, when you're rent seeking, you're there's always value lost in that process. I mean, if you if you move a dollar around yeah. too many people, you end up with ninety cents because it gets wasted yeah. in the process. Yeah. So <laughs> you're you're fighting uphill. Yeah. It's, and it's whole, whole separate conversation. So to getting back to you and aligned minds, everything else. So you, you, just to kind of repeat it. You yeah. had LWK as sort of your get to know you vehicle. You have the, now this corporate um, top, if you like. It's a corporate it's an ecosystem where, yeah, enlightened minds. Right. Okay. But within the like, ecosystem, you're not really marketing enlightened minds because it, it itself doesn't sell something. It, it's the subsidiary companies that do it. And then yeah. you've done something very clever and unique. You're not just offering a suite of products. You're, you noticed or maybe intended that these are beneficial for companies to use one or more of them. And so when they come into the ecosystem, you're kind of acting like an incubator a little bit. You're, providing them the services they need to scale and grow maybe with an idea towards an exit. Is that a fair summary? Correct. This is exactly what we are, who we, well, this is where we're growing now. And uh, look, and we haven't discussed this, but it's good that we're having this interview because I know that this ecosystem will also require a lot of talents in the sense of advisors who can also benefit from things we have within sure and help companies inside because to have like people like you let's put it this way me innocent me <laughs> you and people like you with all this experience and knowledge being an entrepreneur right so there are companies out there they won't be able to afford you full time or to have you there on board right but most probably to have have you guys at one table like an advisory board sure. right so this will change a lot in their how they see things how they want to do and sometimes i spoke to companies before, they didn't even have uh, they don't have an exit strategy they haven't thought about the exit strategy so they're raising money now to deploy them and grow the company without an exit strategy I mean, they don't know where they were. It's not like a question on in the interview where you want to be in five years. Okay, so th that's 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 strange. I mean, it's not that I had the exit strategy, but still, I mean, you want to do something with your business, right? So you either, you grow, you sell it. you and, Unless it's a lifestyle business, but what, what eventually happens is your life changes and eventually you're like, the lifestyle business that served my lifestyle before doesn't serve anymore. Yeah. You know, now yeah. what do I do? Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is this is this is where enlightened minds, I think, enlightens a lot of minds. Where uh, having this ecosystem, as I said, we no longer promote enlightened minds unless it's like a big, like Dubai FinTech Summit was there at the uh, Madina Jumeirah, and new is coming up as enlightened minds was is an investment company, right? But in general, enlightened minds doesn't have services. Or products. I, I understand. It has come. Yeah. So. So did, did, this, did, just you said it before, but just list them off. The the services of the companies yeah, underneath six, Enlightened Minds are yeah, what? Yeah. yeah. So Enlightened Minds stands on six main pillars, and in each division, uh, we that, have those are what you said before. So marketing. Pillar. It's marketing and media, 
Yes. So, and then it's lifestyle. So everything yes. related to lifestyle, it's event management, concierge, real estate. Then yes. it's health and wellness. Yes. This is where we have our medical equipment company, a couple of clinics. We have two clinics now. And, oh, wow. uh, nutrition. So, yeah, we have mental health and uh, longevity and TH clinic. So okay. then it's learning and development. This is where we invest into schools, nurseries, uh, learning centers uh, and uh, online schools, physical schools. Yes. Then it's next gen technologies. This yes. is what you might like because this is where we have our AI project. We have Web3, two projects, but uh, it it does require a lot of more focus. But I mean, the AI, yeah, we just, we just, it's came... a pretty broad thing. Next generation technologies, that, that's the world. Yeah, exactly. But that's why we we call it that. So we know whatever comes next will be always yeah. next gen. <laughs> so right. and then investment. So investment is the, this is where we now forming an investment fund in order to invest and help those companies grow. Because now at this stage, we are investing with services and money as well. We mm -hmm. use our own funds to invest. But now we get attentions from investors. And I think that would be wise to put them all in into an investment fund, like capital growth fund, and then invest. But interesting. This is, yeah, this is what we have. This is what we are. Yeah. So where, where do you see yourself and where do you see this whole thing in, besides for just more, what yeah. do you, where do you see yourself in 2025, six, seven, eight? Well, uh, my main focus for myself for sure is the uh, more into, towards uh, health and wellness. Right, the um, uh, anti-age longevity, but as individual, um, I see <laughs> how maybe the guys who I'm, I'm thinking now of a bank, a digital bank, mm -hmm. because uh, with the solutions uh, and the soft development we are currently working on, mm -hmm. I think there is a really good chance of putting it all under the bank. So bank can finance the funds and bank can finance the, uh, and offer services to clients. And uh... I think I think you probably legally need to keep them separate. I, I, at least in the US, you can't combine banking services with other services usually, but that doesn't mean they can't be parallel. Yes. It doesn't mean they can't right. operate together. Um, but yeah. th that's a very interesting idea. And yeah. this is well, I mean, there, there are a couple of softwares we've been developing under next gen technologies, and then I know that uh, uh, we have um, uh, X amount of uh, investments of ourselves, and then there are investors as well. Mm -hmm. So, we're kind of trying to see if we can merge the idea of a bank because I believe this year started very, it's like everything I say mm -hmm. somehow will either appear in the person in the newspaper, in the article. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed. Like uh, I, I, I've noticed it for years and it's a little bit, it's yeah. awesome and scary. Yes. Uh, it's sometimes it's either someone listening or it's just like just there and that's how it works. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 it comes sometimes to so strange things. Like, you know, I said... And the next day, someone is repeating it like, Timur, have you thought about this? I was like, oh, come on, that's scary. Even the bank thing, you know. I know, and the friend you thing. haven't thought about for 10 years then emails you for no reason. You're like, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'll give it, it's like a short example before we finish. Yeah. Uh, I went to sign some documents with our PRO and then we just had discussion and she's like, ah, Timur, you know, I'm 42 and, you know, I've been with the company now eight years and uh, I don't have nothing on my own and, uh, you know, it was Valentine's Day. She said, like, you know, I, I was really thinking about a flower shop. Like, uh, but if, but do you think, shall we open a flower shop, but together, like, without the company, but just you and me and blah, blah, blah. I was like, a flower shop, yeah, nice. Yeah. But not maybe for me, but I'll, 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 I'll talk to my wife. Maybe my wife wants to do something creative, but I don't see it like really scalable business. And it's like, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that. So flower shop, right? So she said it. I said, okay, talk to. My, I'll talk to my wife. 
Um, after two days, I went to chat GPT and I said, okay, give me 20 names for the flower shop just to send it to her to, to show that I'm thinking about it. So, and, uh, and I said, give me a business, basic business plan for the flower shop. So I sent it to her. She said, yeah, yeah, I'm also thinking about it. That day, because the universe now thinks that I'm actually thinking about the flower shop, right? So I, I'm doing steps. That day, I'm having a meeting with a guy who never spoke to me about flower shop. He's not even into flowers. He works for the prime minister office. So we, we met for coffee. And he's like, hey, bro, uh, remember there was a, a shop, a blossom shop in uh, Emirates Towers Hotel? We were meeting in Emirates Towers. I said, yeah. yeah. I don't know why he missed. He said, listen, I just passed by. They're closing. They're moving oh, out. And I, take it over. I, I directly called uh, the leasing department and I can get it at a very cheap price. Are you interested in the flower shop? I was like, are you serious? Like, come on, that's how it works. I said, no, I should have I should have thought about bank. Well, <laughs> no, it's not too late. Hey, Timur, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting the universe digital bank for you. Digital bank for you. Yeah, digital, digital bank, bank, yes. But the moment when I started about digital bank, the book came out uh, of uh, Alec Tinkoff. I'm reading yeah. it now. It's, uh, you know, Tinkoff Bank. So... I read the book, and then I was uh, at DAFC. The uh, magazine just popped at me. It's written. I didn't even read the whole article. It just written banking. I was like, banking? And there is a new digital bank coming up. And I was like, come on now. <laughs> that's too scary. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's because important. you said 2025, uh, I thought, okay. So uh, Because in, in terms of funds, right? So... We have really, really strong uh, investors and ourselves, we understand it because we have real estate, we understand the real estate market, but more from the perspective of development. So we thought, okay, uh, instead of just buying one land, building one building, and then maybe uh, selling it at plus 40%, okay, maybe we can put it all in the fund, but then we can distribute and deploy capital in different aspects, buying, selling, uh buying distress deals and then the development okay so we got an attention of a couple of investors who said yeah i don't want to buy a part i already bought 20 apartments i should have maybe invest into development and then so yeah there is an attention then we understand if in order to open schools we want we need to fundraise but we can't fundraise into each single school why don't we put it in the fund okay so now imagine me talking about enlightened minds and then saying, okay, we have a real estate fund, we have education fund. I was like, but digital bank will allow people to have an asset management, which will oh, yeah, I see have, sure. yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. smart. Good. There is no plan, but yeah. Okay. No, but so there's that's an intention it. and the universe is listening to us. Yes. This video. yes. So anyone watching and there's gonna be obviously thousands of people watching this video if you know anything yeah. about digital banks or funds or health tech or next tech or interested yeah like include timor's information in the in the video description obviously like we always do yes thank you man thank you i appreciate it and uh hey, hold on, wait, we're not we're not done yet I, yeah. I can't help but notice and you're putting it on instagram so i assume it's public you seem to be on a cardio kick in the morning are you running like at five o'clock every morning or what, what are you doing yeah. Uh, so what happened? That the, the whole I think that the whole universe start working with me. Or oh, I said maybe it was always there. It's just that I was blinded because uh, so I quit alcohol completely for a year now, right? Mashallah. So I quit, I quit smoking now four months. I wake up every morning for a morning pray, and then I, I walk outside. Uh, for six, six and a half kilometers. I do a little bit uh, push-ups, press-ups. So I start losing weight a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see more clear. I think more clear. And I'm always happy. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. And, Good for uh, you. That's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, and, All right. Uh, you know, I, I can see why your success is going up. Because, you know, you, yeah. you got your body aligned and, you, and your yes. soul aligned. 
Perfect. Yeah, this is all now connected. I do yoga once a week. Or maybe I'll start doing more. Like it's my second uh, class. Oh. <laughs> I this Sunday I went for yoga, and uh, now I'm um, this Ramadan. I'm like fasting. I think it, the whole preparation of the body and mindset was for this months of uh, holy months of Ramadan, and uh, yeah, I pray five times a day. I uh, try to finish everything before three four and then run home i have two kids i have three son and uh yeah i'm a happy dad <laughs> oh my god you're, you're, you're doing a lot okay well you're inspirational because <laughs> i just got married and we're gonna hopefully pop out some kids so now i need to be like you yes 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 yeah that's a blessing and i wish you all the best brother Thank you. All right, everyone. Uh, Timur Kudradov, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. We'll include your contact information in the description of the video, and we'll pump this out this week. And I know you're busy. Yes. Thank you. And I'll see you at Iftar. Thank Friday. you very much, Gordon. Uh, let's catch up very soon. Yes, thank yes. you very much. All right, I'm going to stop Love the recording. One second here. I just put on my glasses so I did this here.